Right, so we had some question, questions about the HSMs, and uh, so let's have the presentation about HSMs, the hardware security modules. And uh, we'll try to give you some information on what to do, um, some uh, uh, introduction to a buyer's guide, what to think of when you're going to buy it, buy one. And uh, so first of all, I'm going to try to describe what an HSM is. And you can divide it into different parts. It's a protected key store, which means that you store your keys in the HSM, but um, meaning that you store it in the HSM, they don't have to be physically in the HSM, just that they are protected by the HSM. They can be uh, stored on the hard drive, but encrypted so that it's only understandable by the H HSM. Then they can extract it from the hard drive and then use it within the HSM. Or they can be uh, stored in a LDAP server, for instance, and then retrieved back to the HSM. So it depends on the <coughs> the implementation of the HSM, but uh, it's used as a protected key store, which means that you can't extract the private key material. It's uh, securely stored away in the HSM. And you can also use it for as a crypto hardware to increase the performance of your system. So many of the HSMs are providing different algorithms that you can use. So it's not just only for signing, you can also use it for encryption, for instance, for SSL accelerization for your web servers. Uh, but we were going to focus on the signing part in this tutorial about the HSMs and what you need in, in order to do signing for DNSSEC. And the uh, HSM must also have a well-defined interface. So it's not just only PKCS11 as we talked about this. There are also other APIs that you can use depending on the application that you're going to use. And the keys that you have in your key store, as I said, they are protected in the HSMs, mostly in the directly in the hardware, but some are also storing it encrypted on the hard drive. Uh, but uh, the key stores or the HSMs are physically protected by different uh, uh, ways. So for instance, they have could have some mesh around it in so, so they can detect if someone is trying to break in into the hardware. Um, they can have Epoxy layer <laughs> on top of it just to protect everything, so you don't can so you cannot min mani manipulate the hardware. And then for the crypto hardware, just to a assist you with uh, the crypto stuff, so you can have accelerization. And you have to look on what algorithms there are available: RSA, DSA, and or if you want to do symmetric encryption for SSL, for instance, you have AES. Triple des, but they also have good uh, random number generators in the HSM as well, so you can get up, get g good random numbers from the HSM. Uh, but you also do hashing, and I think most implementations are actually doing it right in the ho host because nowadays the the CPU or the hardware's in the computers are really good, and there are good algorithms that you can run di directly on on the host. And the reason why you do it because you gain some speed. Uh, you gain speed by doing that. So you don't have to go, go out to the hardware to do hashing, and uh, you don't. Uh, hashing is not sensitive information. You don't. You don't handle keys when you do hashing. So you just you're just creating a check a checksum on top of some information, and that's why you can do it directly in the host and not out in the hardware. But in anyway, uh, the hashing is still done by the HSM but in their own library that they are providing to the software that they're using. So you don't have to think about how to do RSA or, I mean, SHA-1, for instance. That will be done by the software, but by the vendor's own crypto library. Then we have different APIs. Um, the one that I've been talking about today is the PKCS11, also called a crypto key. Uh, that's the most common one and uh, it's specified by uh, RSA laboratories. There are different PKCS11 APIs or specifications. You have, for instance, the PKCS1, I think it has about 
uh, key handling for RSA. We have PKCS8 for key storage in how to specify a key in, in a file, etc. So there are many PKCS11 types. And, and for hand co doing communication with HSMs, you have the PKCS11. But you could also use some interface for OpenSSL, so you can re repla replace the internal engine with something that's going to talk to the HSM rather than the, the CPU of your host. Microsoft has something that's called Crypto API. And then uh, you also have Java crypt cryptographic uh, extension. So you you can still have one HSM, but it could can talk different APIs depending on your application. And you can also stack them on, on top of each other. So some on the top of it, you have your application, but then you can feed application with different ways of communi communicating with uh, your, your crypto device. You can even, uh, uh, since we have the soft HSM, you can also have a CPU directly below the PKCS11, so you can have like four layers before you come to soft HSM, but if you're going to nest this, then you you probably get some performance loss because you have so many, so many layers on top of it. But uh, basically OpenDNSSEC use directly PCS11 to the crypto device. But I know that Bind are using an OpenSSL engine in order to talk PCS11 and then they have the crypto in device. And here's an example of how the API looks like if you're going to talk PCS11 just to give you a view of what we're actually doing with the HSM. So whenever you want to start using the HSM, you have to call an initialization function. And then yes, it sets up everything so you have the correct environment and all the variables are set and you're ready to go. Then you want to find out uh, what slots are available because you, you can imagine that you have, for instance, a smart card reader that could be a slot. And then you have your smart card, which, uh, which is a token. But you can have multiple smart card readers, multiple tokens, and they can be moved around. So you have to get some information about what is connected to your system. So you give a function call which achieves this slot list with information. And then you decide, depending on that information, on what, what token you're going to connect to. And that you do with uh, the open session. So you open a session to a particular token. And when you have a session to a token, you can start doing all the, the stuff that you want to do. But some of the functions are protected for instance, gaining access to a private key to do signing, then you have to log on or log in to the token. And once you've done that, then you can start doing all these <coughs> operations, like for instance, generate a key pair. You can search for information or objects in the HSM. And then you can do signing. And when you're done, you just finalize everything and then you close, you close down uh, your connection. So, but there are many more, so I think there are 30, 40 uh, function calls that you can use. So it depends on what you're going to do. But this is a brief overview of how we handle PKCS11. So why are we going to use a HSM? And the first thing is to think of the risk. And the risk is that your keys might be compromised. It can be someone who hacked into your system and thus having access to the keys that are stored on disk. You could uh, have some staff working on your company that uh, steals the keys and give it to someone else. Or it could also be that someone uh, has broken the algorithm and thus calculated the private key from the public key. So how can we protect us? Well, first of all, we have to protect the host. That's the basic stuff that you have to do. Uh, but then you also have to protect the uh, private keys as well. And this is why we're going to use HSMs, because then you move the keys into the HSM. But you still have to remember, even though the keys are in the HSMs, they can be misused. So you have to protect your host. And if you get some bad data into your zone, it will get signed. So you have to protect your 
uh, registry system somehow, so they don't input bad information into your system because that will be signed by, H by the HSM. So the, you know, there are different ways to protecting your system, and the HSM is one of them. But you have to do more than that. Then you can also increase the trust on your system. And uh, one thing is to use some uh, certification levels, like for instance using the FIPS certifications. And, that, and uh, by using that you know what security you get by the system, because they have different security levels. Um, but you also get a clean cut between, between the software and the hardware, which means that if you're going to use an application, you know that your keys are sa safely stored away in the HSMs, and uh, the application doesn't have any access to the private key material. Um, but you also have need some some recommendations of what to think of when you're going to start to buy an HSM because there are many on the markets and they really where the price ranges from fifty dollar upwards. So the first thing to think of is how do you want to talk to the HSM? Do you want it to be a smart card? Do you want it to be a USB uh, stick that you put into your uh, host or PCI card? or something that you connect to your local network. So it there are many ways to interact with HSMs. <laughs> and you also have to think of what algori algorithms and, uh, and the key sizes you want to use. So if you're going to use RSA, make sure that your HSM do support it. But uh, for instance, if you live in Russia, then you have the requirement that you have to use GOST. So then you have to read the specification just to get everything correctly and also make sure that you are fu uh, future proof that you know that in, for instance, in three years we're going to upgrade to a higher security level, then it's uh, good to just buy some hardware that supports th those upgrades. And you also have to think of the key sizes because you might want to roll over to a key with a larger key size in the future. So this is, for instance, for RSA. So you should make sure that it at least should handle those key sizes, but in the future you might be want to use the 4096 bits. But uh, these key sizes differ so if you're going to use DSA because they have smaller key sizes for that. But also you have to think of how many keys can you store in your H HSM. Uh, do you want to store 1,000 key pairs, well, then your key store must be able to store that. Unless you use key sharing when you're where you share a single key pair with multiple zones, then it doesn't matter actually about the key size. And if you're, for instance, looking at the soft HSM, then the only limit is the database because you just use the integer counter to, to count the objects. And also, have to think of how your keys are stored. Some are use an internal key store within the HSMs, but others use, for instance, a encrypted key store on your hard drive or something in a LDAP server somewhere. So this depends on how you want to be sure uh, where you want to have all the keys stored. And then you should have a look on your software and make sure that it supports the APIs that you want to use, but in our case, it's only PKCS11 that we're interested in. And I think uh, most of them support PKCS11. But you also have to keep in mind what platform you want to run on, so you don't use buy an HSM that doesn't support to be run on a particular kernel version, etc. Because you, in order to talk to HSMs, you have to have some software on your host. And even though the HSM is connected to the network, our applications still need to talk to the vendor's library, and that library will then in turn talk to the network HSM. And next thing is the speed. You have to do some calculations on how often you should refresh your signatures, or how many songs you have, how many signatures should it be, and how often should you produce a new signed zone. 
and then you have some good figure on how many signatures you have to create per second. Uh, those are usually measured in 1024 bits RSA keys. So mo I think most vendors do have some speed numbers on their specifications, but otherwise you have to borrow one from them and we have some utility in OpenDNSSEC where you can measure the performance on the HSM. But it might also be interesting to do some key generation speed, but that's only interesting if you're going to use many keys or if you're not going to share keys between your zones and you have multiple zones, then it might be important on how long does it take to generate keys so you don't store, uh, so you're not starving on on keys that you always have the correct amount of keys that the system can use. But this is usually not a problem. You should focus on the, the signing speed. And you can have different uh, security levels on your system and that can be specified by using FIPS or common criteria, uh, but they differ somewhat on how you can rely on <coughs> the secu security level because in FIPS you have a cr uh, clear levels of security. Oh, so I don't know, we're losing some parts there, but the first level is are just some basic re security requirements. So it's, it, it just tells you that it's following the, the best current practice of handling the security. But if you move up one level, then you get temper evidence, which means that you can see that if someone had broken into the HSM and stolen your keys, but it doesn't do anything about it. But if, if it's temper detection, then it det detects that someone has broken into the uh, HSM and the, then erases the keys. So that's the difference between level two and three. Level two, you can see that, for instance, if you only have epoxy, then you see on the hardware that someone has broken into the the hardware. But in level three, for instance, you can add some uh, mesh on top of it, which detects if someone drills into the hardware and then zeroizes the keys. And finally, we have uh, level four. Then you also add some envir environmental protections, for instance, that uh, you maintain the same temperature, you don't have vibrations, etc. So it uh, can detect if someone is stealing the, the hard drive or the the hardware and running away with it and then it takes the vibrations and then just erases everything. But uh, the higher up you go, the more it costs as well. You can see later on with some examples. Then you also have the common criteria. It's a little bit more uh, harder to know what you actually get depending on the, the level because um, the certification level depends on what you're actually testing against. So you have to read the protection profile in order to know what they have tested because they can have a simple test and then you get a high level for just that particular test. But there are some common protection profiles that they can use to test your the, the HSMs. But it's most common to use the, the FIPS levels to show the security requirement or the security level on the hardware. And as you heard before, it's important to do backup, but it's out of the scope for OpenDNSSEC to do backups of the keys. We are, we are only interested to know that backup has been done, but it's up to your system to do the backup. Uh, b and that is because there are no common way of doing backup, so you have to read the manual and see how the backups are done. Uh, some do it by just copying some files that are encrypted, others have uh, uh, encrypted can uh, uh, network connections with the other HSMs and thus are always synchronized, have the latest information. Uh, can you do backups in well-known formats so you can export it into another vendor? So, so for instance, if uh, one vendor goes bankrupt and doesn't uh, create new a HSMs and you have some problems, then you want to <coughs> move your uh, keys directly over to the new HSMs but you can always roll your keys over to a new HSM, so that's no problem. But it's always good to have a look on what you can do in order to restore your, s restore your environment. And we have uh, some examples of different HSMs. So this one is the one that we are using here at OTSC. 
is the Sun Car or the Sun Crypto Accelerator 6000. It's just a PCI Express card that you plug into your server. And it has the security level 3. So you can see all the epoxy on top of it, so you don't see any hardware at all on it. But you get really good performance, 13,000 signatures per second. And I think that is the fastest one, fastest one on, mar on the market. And you can also combine them and use three of them. I think we got 40,000 signatures per second. But that's some really high performance. You can use it on Solaris, Red Hat, Susie, and it's only it only costs around 1,000 euros. So it's a uh, good performance for a good price. But it also has some down downside that you might not get uh, the best support that you wanted to have compared to it with if you go to a vendor that's uh, that focus only on HSMs. So they have a higher expertise on HSMs compared with some that do multiple things. Oh, Oracle, yeah, yeah. So they they don't they're, they're not named Sun anymore. So it's I think they changed the name as well on this product. Should it be O C A? Another example, but now we get get up in the price range. So these uh, HSMs that we are showing you are some really top notch HSMs, but they're also cheaper ones. But we haven't tested them ourselves, so. These are just some experience that we have when we saw wanted to deploy for .sc. Here we have the AP Keeper. It's the highest security level, level 4, but you pay around 18 times more <coughs> and get 10 times slower performance. But you pay for the quality of the product, uh, the high security level, because you have different ways of authenticating to the system. You, you can, for instance, do M out of N authentications, meaning that you have to have um, three o operators here out of seven in order to start up the system. And they have all to log into the system. You also get some, you can use some keypads, etc. And it also works on all of the systems, Solaris, Linux, Windows. Another example is the IBM car. Uh, it's the same level, same speed, a little bit cheaper. But we, this one we haven't tested. I think we only have got some information from them about this. And we also have the soft HSM as well, so it's totally free. But the speed depends on what system you're running on. So uh, the speed I got was 5,000 signatures per second, and that was on a quad-core machine, I think it was. And it's, uh, was it two years old? Something like that, that server. So it might be even higher if you go to, in to newer hardware. But the current version of OpenDNSSEC only uses one core. But yeah, I think it is for 1.3. When we introduce the, some more stuff into OpenDNSSEC, we'll use multiple threads to do signing. But if you use I think uh, most of you will sign multiple zones, and then you get multiple threads because you get one thread per zone. But for instance, uh, we as a TLD, we only have one zone, and then we only get one thread. So we only use one core, and, and thus we don't get the optimal performance from the HSMs. For instance, um, I think you have to run like 32 threads or something like that to get up into this performance. So we only get around 1,200 signatures per second, I think, with this one, when we only use utilize one thread. But this will be better in, in a couple of months when you use multiple threads. But in your case, you use multiple zones and thus getting the maximum performance from the HSM. Uh, but these were some top-notch HSMs, but you can also use, uh, there are, for instance, uh, USB sticks, but that may, it might be easy to steal them. You can use smart cards as well. So I would recommend you to search around on the internet and see what type of hardware is that are available. 
but you also have to have a look on what your security requirements are. Do you really need an HSM? Is it sufficient to use a soft HSM? You can always use soft HSM in the beginning, and then you can roll your keys over to a real HSM later on. So I think that was all about, oh yeah, here, here we have some different vendors as well that you can have a look on. So what do you think about HSMs? Will that be something that you're going to use or will it be more focused on soft HSMs? Maybe we have to think about that. Do you have any questions about HSMs? Sorry, what uh, have have you had a look on? Yeah. 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 So we we actually going to I think we're planning to have a little bit more look on different HSMs that are available on the market, do some more comparison and because the lifetime on hardware is that like five years or something like that, and we have to do, do some re have to replace the HSM some some way in the in the future. And thus, it's good to have a good overview of what's available. Then we also can give some recommenda recommendations to you as well, probably in the future. 